JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, Eagler charged for Padmore shooting. The police have charged a man with wounding with intent after an incident on Padmore Main Road in Red Hills, St. Andrew last Sunday. Charged is 33-year-old Higler Jason Jackson, otherwise called Mighty, of Mosquito Valley, Red Hills in the parish. The police said that about 1.30 p.m. Jackson and the complainant were reportedly left home to view a motorcycle. While traveling along the roadway, Jackson allegedly pulled a firearm at the complainant and shot him. The complainant escaped and made a report to the police. Following investigations, Jackson was arrested later that same day and subsequently charged. 17-year-old slapped with gun charges. A Kingston teenager has been charged with wounding with intent, illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition after allegedly shooting a man on Beach Road, 9 miles, Bull Bay on Tuesday. According to the police, about 8.30 a.m., the teen allegedly pounced upon the complainant and shot him several times before escaping on foot in the area. The complainant was taken to the hospital, where he was treated and admitted in stable condition. The teenager was later arrested and charged after a question and answer interview. Three charged for trying to export drugs through courier services. Two women and a man have been slapped with multiple drug-related charges, following three separate incidents dating back to 2019. According to the police, the individuals allegedly attempted to export illegal drugs in various packages through the nation's ports. Charge are 20-year-old Beryl Jermaine Wilmoth, 21-year-old Janiel Edwards, and Shana K. Jones. The police said Jones, who was charged on Wednesday, has been charged with possession of ganja, dealing in and taking preparatory steps to export ganja. It is alleged that on May 15, 2019, Jones used a courier service and attempted to ship a package to the Dominican Republic. The package was later found to contain approximately three pounds of ganja valued at approximately $12,000. Meanwhile, the police said Wilmoth has been charged with possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, and attempting to export cocaine. The police said Wilmot's charges are in connection with an incident on Monday, April 27, 2020. He also allegedly went to a courier service center where he attempted to export a carton box containing six spice buns and three tins of cheese. However, during security checks, approximately 11 ounces of cocaine valued at approximately $37,000 were found in the buns. Both Jones and Wilmot are scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on February 18. In the final incident, Edwards was arrested in connection with an incident which occurred in April 2020. According to the police, Edwards attempted to ship a package containing seasoning and coffee beans through a courier service. However, the police said the package was examined and found to contain approximately 12 ounces of ganja, valued at $3,000. She was subsequently charged with possession of ganja, dealing in ganja, and taking steps to export ganja. She is scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on March 12. Police say a woman fabricated St. Anne rape story. One of the reports of rape in this parish that was circulated on social media, sparking concern and fear among many Jamaicans last month, was fabricated, the police say. Speaking at the monthly meeting of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation, New commanding officer for the St. Anne Police Division, Superintendent Dwight Powell, said as officers were advancing their investigation into the rape and abduction in Ocherius to apprehend suspects, one of the complainants retracted her statement. She is now saying that she was neither raped nor abducted, the senior cop revealed. He is thus urging members of the public to desist from making similar accusations that will spike public concerns, even while encouraging women to remain cautious. I want to advise, especially our women, to ensure that when they are in the public domain, they remain alert and aware of their surroundings. And when they travel on public passenger vehicles, they use those that they are acquainted with, Powell said. As of January 11, the parish recorded six rape cases. This followed several reports of rape in and around Ocherius in communities like Pineapple and the Fern Gully area. Some cases also occurred in the border in St. Mary. Social media reports indicated that several women were abducted in broad daylight on busy streets when men drove up, pulled them into vehicles, and intimidated them with weapons. They were then driven to unknown locations as far as Portland and were raped before being released. 
Post said the police have arrested a prime suspect believed to have been involved in similar offenses. Our investigation revealed that he was implicated in a few of these incidents and so was placed on an identification parade and has been positively identified, he said. Counselors expressed concern about whether the police will charge the woman for public mischief and police said the police are pursuing all possible angles in the investigation. Police appeal for help in suspected hit-and-run case. The police are appealing for the public's help as they investigate the circumstances that led to the death of a 59-year-old man in December 2020. According to the police, the man, 59-year-old Ernesto Montgomery of a health show St. Catherine address, died at the hospital on December 24 after he was brought there on December 20 suffering from various injuries. To date, lawmen said they have been unable to establish how he sustained his injuries. However, based on information gathered so far, investigators theorize that about 6 a.m., Montgomery was jogging along the Hellsher Main Road where he exercised daily when he was hit by a motorcycle that did not stop. It is believed that Montgomery was assisted to the hospital by a taxi operator who was passing by. The police are now appealing to the taxi operator, anyone who witnessed the incident, or anyone who may have any information that can assist in the investigation, to contact them at 876-939-9446. 876-949-8422, Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Largest four-lane bridge to be built over Rayamino in Clarendon. The largest four-lane bridge in Jamaica is to be constructed over the Rayamino in Clarendon as part of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. Managing Director of the National Road Operating and Construction Company, NROC, Ivan Anderson, said that the bridge will be much wider than the existing bridge which is a two-lane thoroughfare. He said that proprietor work for the construction of the bridge, which involves piling heavy stakes or posts installed to support the foundation of a superstructure, is now underway at the site. The bridge sits on 30-foot long piles, which are driven all the way down into bedrock under the ground. So that's the major activity taking place now. We are drilling for the piles, Anderson explained. He added that the steel cages are now sitting on the ground, so once the drilling is completed, the steel cages will be inserted and concrete will be poured. The managing director said that at almost 150 meters or 450 feet wide, the bridge will be very imposing. He noted that over the years, the Rayaminas had significant flood events. So the bridge is designed for a 100-year storm, meaning that for a 100-year event, the bridge should not be overtopped. Anderson said that design of the bridge has taken previous experience into consideration such as in 1986 when the approaches to the existing bridge collapsed as a hearth embankment on the western side was washed away. Taking that into account, we have reviewed the design, so our new bridge is now 150 meters wide, so it is much wider than the existing bridge and is capable of allowing flows from a storm with a regular period of greater than 100 years, so we don't expect to have any similar issues again, he said. Anderson added that the drainage in the area is expected to be significantly improved. Two additional bridges are to be built under the project, one of which will be done over the Milk River and the other over the St. Annie's Gully. Thirteen other structures, including underpasses, field, connectors, and an overpass are being constructed. The work is being done on the Maypen to Williams Field leg of Highway 2000, which is currently under construction. NROC is responsible for the establishment, development, financing, operation, and maintenance of Jamaica's toll highways. Monroe College reverts to online teaching after COVID-19 positive cases. Monroe College in St. Elizabeth has reverted to virtual learning due to incidents of COVID-19 at the school. According to a statement from the Ministry of Education, tests conducted by the Health Ministry on the campus between January 18 and last Tuesday found that two teachers and 21 students tested positive. The school has since provided the Ministry of Health with the details of all the students who were involved in face-to-face -face instruction. The Education Ministry said contact has already been made with the parents of students affected and the Ministry will be in touch with all students and staff who were in contact with the affected persons. The school will also begin a deep cleaning exercise and offer virtual psychosocial sessions as of Monday, February 15. Classes will resume virtually after the midterm break. Jamaica passes 19,000 mark with 205 new COVID-19 cases. Jamaica has surpassed 
19,000 cases of COVID-19, as 205 new cases were confirmed yesterday. The new cases bring to 19,035, the total number of cases that have been recorded in the island. The country also recorded two additional virus-related deaths, pushing the death toll to 374. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the deaths involved two men, a 58-year-old from Kingston and St. Andrew, and an 80-year-old from Portland. Of the 205 newly reported cases, there were 98 males and 104 females, with ages ranging from 4 to 92 years. The genders of three of the cases are still under investigation. The cases were recorded in St. Catherine, 51, Clarendon, 39, Manchester, 24, Kingston and St. Andrew, 22, St. James, 20, St. Elizabeth, 14, Westmoreland, 9, Trelawney, St. Mary, 8 each, Hanover, 6, Portland, 2, and St. Anne and St. Thomas, 1 each. There were also 48 new patient recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 12,593. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.